coordinate stuff. Okay, cool. So let's kind of review. We talked about this in lecture, and remember we went over this before, but it, it doesn't hurt to talk about it. X is equal to R cosine theta. You guys remember that? Y is R sine theta. We have R is equal to the square root of X squared plus Y squared. And then DV, like we talk about, and I think they do the proof in lecture. You'll never have to do the proof on your own, um, but you always have to remember it. R DZ dr d theta. Um, so it's basically just like uh, polar coordinates, except you slip the uh, the z in there for your uh, cylindrical. But yeah, okay. Um, remember, we can actually look at the graph. Actually, we might be able to do this. Um, let's see if this works. Oh, it didn't work. I had a picture I wanted to paste. Oh, there it is. Computer isn't liking it. Okay, we'll just keep where it is. So remember, we're talking about um, uh, uh, cylindrical. We've got the r, um, we've got the theta, and then we've got our z. So that's what we care about for the cylindrical. But if we're talking about spherical, okay, now we can talk about spherical. Z um, is equal to rho cosine phi. So we've got a phi in there. R is equal to rho sine of phi. Uh, rho or r is equal to rho sine of phi. Sorry. So if we're converting from cylindrical um, to spherical, those two are are pretty helpful. Um, then if we're talking about just uh, cylindrical from Cartesian, we have um, x squared plus y squared plus z squared. That makes pretty sense. Pythagorean theorems. Um, x is equal to okay. So remember that in cylindrical, x is equal to r cosine theta. Um, and now r in spherical is just rho sine phi. So we just say x is equal to rho sine phi times cosine theta. The same thing goes for um, y, where instead of r sine of theta, it's rho sine of phi sine of theta. So you can just imagine that basically this is equal to r. Cool, from above. Okay, and then for dv, we have uh, rho squared sine of phi. If you've got the tune in your head, d rho, d phi, d theta. Cool. Luckily for you guys, you'll probably have that on you when you take the exam. So nothing too hard to memorize. Just make sure you have it organized correct uh, and in somewhere. Like an index card is really great if you guys are doing these problems. You can keep it on an index card for you. But yeah, are there any questions about that? And I can pull up the diagram as well again. Um, so we have our diagram. It's important to note how phi works. Remember, phi comes like this. And phi goes from 0 to pi, or 0 to 180 degrees. But we're always going to use um, radians usually. Yeah. And actually, I mean, if coming from like a senior engineering student here, it, it's kind of hard to imagine when you're going to use cylindrical coordinates in real life. Um, but you'll use cylindrical coordinates actually and spherical coordinates quite a bit, more spherical than cylindrical, I guess. But you lose spherical quite a bit because whenever you're talking about hardware, um, like sensors, Sensors really have a hard time um, imagining themselves in a Cartesian coordinates, unless you're talking about some sort of small scale positioning system. But usually, how sensors work is they work in spherical coordinates. You know, like say you have like a little like turret. Um, the turret is going to work off of theta, like phi, and um, a row. Like it's not going to work off of x, y, z. The same thing goes for like light sensors or uh, servos, anything like that. Like spherical is actually is pretty the real deal when it comes in um, real world stuff. So it, it is pretty applicable. Um, it's always important just to remember kind of where you're measuring from and stuff like that. But um, it's kind of cool that we get to use real world stuff like this in our math. Um, so let's do this. We've seen this in Butler's lecture this morning. Um, if you guys watched Butler's lecture this morning, use cylindrical coordinates to set up um, this triple integral. Um, I can maybe help you guys draw the picture, and then I'll let you guys go off and see if you can solve this yourselves. Um, so let's draw the picture. 
and I'll zoom out a little bit so we can all see what's going on. So um, we have this shape x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to z, which is less than or equal to 2. Um, if we convert it to polar right away, we can see that, um, or excuse me, not polar, cylindrical, which is basically polar but with a z, right? Um, if we can convert it to uh, cylindrical right away, and I'm letting my computer catch up because I'm writing, but it isn't seeing it. Uh, there it is. Okay, it just caught up. Excellent. Okay, so we have uh, r, right? That's r squared. The square root of r squared is r less than or equal to z, which is less than or equal to 2. We will have to do any conversions for c in cylindrical. So r is less than or equal to z, which is less than or equal to 2. Um, so if we draw that shape, right, it kind of looks like a cone. R is increasing as as z, right? This is r, and for every z that you go up, r gets a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger. That's how you get that cone shape. So there's that. Um, we've got r right here, like technically, um, and we're going all the way around for theta. Um, and we could write our bounds if we wanted to. I think I'll let you guys go for that. Um, don't forget that dv, right? Dv is equal to r dz dr d theta. I'll give you the integral. We'll want our function, and then we'll want times r d z. That should be a z, excuse me. D r d theta. I'll give you guys like two minutes. Nice warm-up problem. If you have to review your notes, go for it, um, and we'll see how you do. I'll get back to you in two minutes. Good luck. All right, sweet. So let's see how you guys did. Um, so remember, we're going to start with theta on the outside. So d theta, we go all the way around. So we're going from 0 to 2 pi. That's usually the easiest, this theta. We always like that. Uh, dr, OK. So dr, um, we're basically going, and I'll do it from another color, right? If we start dr here, and then we go here, um, we're going from 0 to 2, right? So our dr is from 0 to 2, and that's in every direction. And then dz, all right, let's take a look at dz. I'll do it with another color. Um, dz, we're going, so as our z increases, it's our hour changes. Um, and we're going to basically start with like a lower r, right? We start with r and we go to 2. Oh, excuse me, I sliced this the wrong direction. So with z, we're going to slice it um, top left, right? Because we're talking about the z direction. So we're going to start with our r, which is down here, and we're going to go all the way up to 2. So we're slicing in this direction. This line is technically z is equal to r, right? We talked about that in lecture. And then up here, z is equal to 2. So our bottom bound is the r line, z is equal to r. Our upper bound will become z is equal to 2. So yeah. And now we need our inside function. 
Um, we take basically the square root of x squared plus, oh, no, excuse me. Um, our inside is just z. So z, uh, we don't have to do any conversion factors, right, for z. So z just goes into there. I was trying to make it harder than it was, yeah. All right, cool. Boom, we set up our bounds. And you can obviously solve this problem. Um, it's just an iterated integral problem. And you've seen it this morning, so I won't I won't drag it out. All right, one more, some 3D stuff. Set up the integral from lecture today uh, for the mass of a sphere of radius 2 at the origin um, with the density function. Okay, now remember mass, I'll let you say it to yourselves in your bedroom or your living room or wherever you're at. Mass is equal to triple integral of blank dv. And that blank is density. Yes, nice job, everyone. Okay, cool. So we want to integrate across density. So we're just going to, the hardest part is going to be taking our bounds, and then we're just going to plug our density function into our integral, and we're going to solve that. Um, so we want to do um, probably spherical, as we did in lecture. So mass is equal to, so we'll start with the three bounds. Um, we've got our density function. And then remember for spherical, it's rho squared sine of phi d rho d phi d theta. Okay. I'll let you guys loose if you need to review your notes. Go for it. But doing it by yourself is probably the, the most important part. Start crawl, walk around here. Um, yeah. I'll give you another two minutes. Good luck. I believe in you. All right, that was about two minutes. Okay, so there's a lot of things you could do first with this problem, right? Uh, the first thing we probably would do is draw a picture. Um, and looking at what it was, it's a sphere of radius two at the origin, so it's just a big old sphere. Okay, radius two. Um, and they give us this density function. So what we need to do is basically write the bounds for this function, right? Um, so now we really have to understand what theta, phi, and rho are in order to write these bounds. Um, so let's just start with that, and we've got d rho over on the right-hand side, d phi, and d theta. Let that come in. Okay, awesome. All right, so let's start with the d theta. Pretty easy. We're going all the way around, right? 0 to 2 pi. Okay, phi. When it comes to spherical problems, phi is usually the trickiest, um, from what I've found. Um, remember that phi starts in the positive right here, and it comes down and around. So, because we're going all the way from zero to 180 degrees, that is zero to pi. Okay, we got phi done, that's usually the hardest one, awesome. Rho is just the, um, the radius, right, of the sphere, which is just zero to two, because they gave us that in the problem. Okay, cool. 
And now what we need to do is um, get our uh, density function in terms of spherical coordinates. Um, and we did that in lecture. It was 1 plus, remember, uh, this guy right here is rho squared on the inside. So we'll just have rho squared, or yep, rho squared. And then we've got that to the 3 halves, which turns that into 3 over 1 plus rho cubed. And we'll put that in there, 3 rho cubed. And then we also need the, I just left the space just in case we ran out, but then we need the rho squared sine of phi from the dv conversion. All right, cool. And we set up that integral. Awesome. Now all we'd have to do is solve that. Um, and of course, you can find a video on that by someone who's smarter than me to do that. But yeah. All right, cool. So are there any questions about that, setting up integrals? Questions in the chat? Questions in the voice? Awesome. All right, cool. I see no confusion in your your avatars in WebEx, so we're going to keep moving. All right, my computer's being a little slow, but that's okay. Okay, this one's from a fall exam. Here we go. We're jumping right into some exam problems. That's how confident we are. Use cylindrical coordinates to compute the moment of inertia about the z-axis of the solid cone D of radius 1 and height 1 given by the equation. Okay, so we're talking about a cone of radius of 1, height of 1. Um, and we're given an equation for that cone, which is nice. Um, and the density is constant, which is very nice, of uh, equal to 2. Okay, so remember that IZ, um, if we talk about it, any moment of inertia, uh, second moment of inertia, is just this. We're going to have basically uh, the, uh, oh, that's not how you spell distance. Distance. I understand my, my network is being slow today. Distance. And we're going to square that, right, times our density. And we basically integrate those two functions over the entire volume. We have a surface. Okay, so we need to find, density is constant, that's great. Basically, we just need to find a distance function to plug in to here. And once we do that, it's a pretty simple, uh, simple problem. Um, so let's draw our picture. And we'll draw, it's a cone, right, of radius 1 and height 1. So height 1 is just up here. The radius is 1. Um, and then it just comes on down towards the origin. No, that wasn't very good. Cool. Okay. So if we look at our bounds, we can take our bounds, and they give us what they are. Uh, we can bring them into uh, cylindrical coordinates x squared plus y squared, all that converts into is, say it out loud for me, yep, r, you guys got it, it's less than or equal to z, which is less than or equal to, do we need to convert the 1 into anything, say it out loud for me, <gasps> no, we don't, right, because it's just a number, and we're talking about cylindrical, if we're talking about uh, spherical, it might be something different, um, but z's can stay the same, okay, so we've got z is greater than or equal to r, and z is also less than or equal to 1. Okay, and that makes sense because your 1 is the top of the, the cone, right? And then your r is those slices. z is equal to r. Okay, cool. So um, when we're writing our bounds, and this is what I'm going to let you guys do, iz is equal to, so we'll have one bound, second bound, third bound. Our distance is just going to be the radius, right? So we'll just be r squared. Um, our density is 2. And then for the dv, right, uh, this is r dz dr d theta. I can never forget that little r in there. I, I've done it a lot. r dz dr d theta. Okay, cool. Well, I'm going to see if I can get my internet moving any faster here. And while I do that, I'll give you guys about uh, two minutes. Try to write the bounds for this. Um, remember what has to line up with what, and I believe in you guys, I'll give you about two minutes for it, start your Spotify playlist now, and good luck.
And if you've set up the bounds correctly, I'll challenge you to try to solve this one next. I think you can. It's not too hard of a problem to solve. I bet it feel really good to get an exam problem already finished. All right, but if you haven't yet, I'll make sure your bounds are right. Let's talk about the bounds. So our d theta, pretty simple, right? We love d theta. Um, it's just going around on the bottom there. We're going at the full revolution, 360 degrees. Uh, so we're going 0 to 2 pi. Cool. dr, let's talk about dr. Um, so dr, remember, we're basically going from that domain on the bottom, right? That's how large our R is getting. R. Yes. Okay, cool. So our R is going from 0 to the outermost bound that our R is going to be is 1. Right. Cool. And now let's talk about our Z. So when we slice in the Z direction, right, It's like it looks like this. And we just did this problem, which is nice. Um, and maybe I'll do it with a different color. Uh, that way it makes looks good in the solutions. But so we do this. Um, so we're going from R to 1 this time and not 2. Okay. And so if we try to solve this guy out a little bit, we'll have 0 to 2 pi, um, 0 to 1, R to 1, and then we'll have 2R cubed dz dr d theta. So let's solve this together. I think it'd probably be best for all of us um, to solve one of these because I said we were going to do that in the objectives anyways. Uh, so we'll go 0 to 2 pi. Uh, 0 to 1, and let's integrate that inside function. Uh, so we'll have 2r cubed uh, dz. We'll put a z on there, right? And we evaluate that from r to 1 dr d theta. We evaluate that from 1 to r. We'll get uh, 0 to 2 pi. 0 to 1. And we'll get 2r to the cubed minus. 2r to the fourth. Ooh, fun. All right, cool. And then that's dr d theta. Awesome. Now we solve, um, or we take the integral with respect to r now. So we, 0 to 2 pi. Think about it for yourselves. What is going to be on the inside here? I've got 1 half r to the fourth minus 2 over 5, r to the fifth, evaluated from 0 to 1. Ooh, we like that evaluation, d theta. So if we do that, we'll have 0 to 2 pi. Uh, we'll basically have 1 fourth minus 2 fifths d theta. Cool. And now we can do that either way. We can either do that subtraction or we can just keep going. Um, let's just keep going. So then we'll have 1 fourth theta minus 2 over 5 theta. And we evaluate that from 0 to 2 pi. Lucky us, we just have to plug in the 2 pi. So we'll get 2 pi over 4 minus um, 4 pi over 5. Sweet. And we can common denominator that if we want, or we can just box that. I mean, technically, you'd have to multiply it'd be uh, 2 pi over 4. So it would have to become, multiply everything by 5. So it would have to be 10 pi over 20 minus uh, 4 pi. You'd have to multiply that would be 16 pi over 20. So then you'd get negative 6 pi over 20. It's equal to 3 pi over 10, I guess. Negative. Yeah. Cool. 
fun little valuation. Any questions about that one? Sweet. Awesome. Let's move on. Another exam problem. Spring 19. Well, this one was really recent. Find the mass of the solid. Um, big shape Z is less than or equal to another shape. Um, and a density function that doesn't look very fun. Uh, let's look at the shapes involved and use spherical coordinates. Okay. Try to digest this one as best you can. Let's think about it and talk about it. Um, okay, so what are they looking for? Mass, right? So remember that mass is equal to the triple integral of what's on the inside, say to yourselves. Yeah, density, dv, right? We have our surface there. Okay, cool. So our dv in this case is equal to rho squared sine of phi d rho d phi d theta. Yes, I'm good at singing. Okay, so that's going to be your d phi. So we'll have an integral of, uh, we'll have our function, our density function. Um, which is this guy right here, and we can do that right now. So density is equal to 5z um, times the square root of x squared plus y squared. And I'll give you about uh, 30 seconds. See if you can convert that yourselves into spherical coordinates using the identities we talked about at the start of this session. Go for it. All right, let's see how you guys all did. Okay, so we've got the z right here, right? Uh, remember that z is equal to rho cosine of theta. Is that correct? Let me check my identities. Yeah, cosine of phi, excuse me. And then x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. We're taking the square root of it, right? Which becomes r. Remember that r is equal to phi sine or rho sine phi. So we know that our density function is equal to 5 times rho cosine of phi times rho sine of phi. Okay, and we can see where all these identities are going to come in soon, that table we give us, but... Okay. So, let's plug that in. We'll have uh, 5 rho squared uh, cosine of phi sine of phi. And then we've got, remember, we still have rho squared sine of phi d rho d phi d theta. Big problem. Okay, cool. So now we need to find our d theta, d phi, and d rho. We need to find those bounds um, so we can solve this integral. And that's usually the trickiest part of these problems is finding those bounds. Um, so let's look at it. So can we do theta right away? I would say that we can. That one's pretty simple. 0 to 2 pi, right? Awesome. Can we do rho right away? If we look at it. Um, something in Butler's lectures he talks about is drawing it kind of in like the quote slice view, end quote, where we have like z. And you can either have the x or the y axis because, right, we're rotating at 360 degrees. Let's just do the x axis so it's easy. Um, and you basically draw what this graph looks like when you slice it. 
this guy right here. Okay. Your row, right, is at any point is your um, radius. So row is your radius at any point. Um, and we're just going from 0 to what? So if we look at it, um, this top surface, right, is the z is equal to the square root of 4x squared plus y squared, um, which is also z squared plus x squared plus y squared is equal to 4, which is just a circle of radius 2. So if it's a circle of radius 2, we know that a row is never going over 2. So 0 to 2. Easy. All right, cool. Now we need phi. Phi is a little tricky. Um, and let me kind of simplify this up a little bit. I guess I'll just do this. I don't really do myself any favors with the simplicity of that graph. So we'll do this. Okay. So remember how we measure phi. Phi is starts on the axis and goes down. So phi is going to be whatever this angle is right here. So whatever it is. And it's a little tricky. The final answer is going to be phi is equal to pi over 3. Um, and how we do that is we can basically draw like a little triangle, right? We draw a little triangle. So um, and let me, I should have drawn it bigger and I can zoom in actually. So phi, so this hypotenuse of this triangle is equal to, think about it, what is a hypotenuse equal to? If you said rho, you're correct, because it's just the, the radius of that circle, um, which is equal to 2. Okay, now we need one of the sides of the triangle. Um, a little trickier, if you ask me. You can think about it. Think about it, what side of the triangle it's going to be. What are we going to use? Okay, I'll let you think about it long enough. Okay, so we're probably going to use um, this guy right here. We'll use z is equal to one third um, the square root of x squared plus y squared. And let's just say we're crossing the y axis, so uh, we'll make y squared, we'll just make it x squared, right? Because we're rotating 280 degrees. Um, so our z is at um, some uh, value and our x is at some value. Um, Oh, excuse me, there should be a square root in here as well. Okay, so I'm trying to think about how we solve this problem. What we're looking for is we're going to be looking for like the cosine theta is equal to um, square root over 3 over 2, which will give us pi over 3. That's what we want, right? Um, trying to think about how we solve this problem. Anybody got any ideas? I'm a little stumped over here now that I'm looking at it. Solved about 20 minutes ago. I'm looking at all your avatars on my screen. No ideas? Okay, we'll come back to it because we want to keep moving. Um, but what you should get is that um, this angle phi is pi over 3. So what we get is we get a, a phi value from 0 to pi over 3. Yeah, so we're living 60 degrees. But yeah, I'll come back to you with a solution on that. I can't believe I got stumped on that. Um, it's in all underneath all my papers here, so we'll find it later. But yeah, okay. And then what we did is just basically evaluate that problem. Boom, awesome. Um, so we can solve this problem. I don't think we'll have enough time in the session. I kind of want to keep moving. Um, you can find this. If you want to solve out this integral, um, you're basically going to start with rho, right? And then you've got your row here of a row to the fourth term. That 5 will go away really nicely. It's really nice when that 5 goes away. Um, you have a row to the fifth term, and you'll plug in 0 to 2 for your rows. The next thing you'll solve for is phi. Um, and you'll have uh, cosine times the sine squared. Um, 
which is a little tricky. But once you integrate that and then you move out to the theta, uh, and the theta is really nice because then it's just there's no thetas in the problem to begin with. So once you can get through the fees, it's really nice. But yeah, you can find the solution. It's just spring 19. Um, and maybe I can do it out on the page before I publish this to the website. But we'll just keep moving for now. But yeah. All right, cool. Um, so this is what, how we did it with cylindrical um, or spherical. You can also do it with uh, cylindrical. And I just brought that solution along. Um, just for time's sake, um, but you can see what would happen is, um, so you can use the cylindrical coordinates. So what you've got is um, you have to solve it for the z's because the z's are always changing. It's not where you're using a row anymore. Um, so your bounds become uh, start with your theta zero to two pi, which is really nice. Then you move to your r um, zero to the square root of three. Remember how we talked about in problems before where you just are looking at um, the base of that bound. Um, so that would be your r. And then you would move into your z dz, and the dz is usually pretty tricky here. Um, but the nice part is you're just moving from this line, the bottom line, um, to that top curve. And that bottom line equation never changes, and that top curve line never, equa equation never changes. So you only need one integral. Um, and you'll have one third r, which is basically this line, um, because you'll plug in an r for the x squared plus the y squared, and then you'll have uh, this right here. Caleb says set z equal to two. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Oh, for the last problem. Let's try it. So we set z equal to two. Two is equal to one over the square root of three, x squared. Um, so then we'll get, oh yeah, perfect. So then we'll bring the three over. So it'll be the square root of three over two is equal to the square root of x squared. Um, square everything. So then we'll get um, three over four is equal to x squared. Now take the root of our, square root of everything again. I guess you don't really need to do that. But you do the square root of two is equal to x. Sweet, awesome. Nice job, Caleb. Oh, but he just left out. Dang it. Oh, we tried. Okay, cool. But that's how you would have solved that. Sweet. Okay, so then you'll get the cylindrical coordinates just like you would here. All right, cool. And then once once you set up the bounds, then it's just a pretty easy um, integral so solution. And the nice thing is you don't have too much trig in this problem. Um, so as you solve it down, as long as you keep everything straight and your handwriting's uh, not too bad, it's a pretty easy solution. But yeah. All right, cool. Let's check out this one. Convert but do not evaluate the following integral. Um, into cylindrical coordinates. So we'll talk about cylindrical coordinates first, and then we'll move into spherical coordinates. Um, so I'll help you guys draw this picture, um, and then I'll let you loose on it. So let's draw the picture first. Um, and I think the easiest way to draw the picture is to first write the inequalities, right? Um, so this guy matches the outside. So what we have is negative the square root of 3 is less than or equal to y, which is less than or equal to the square root of 3. Then let's look at the x. We'll have the negative square root of 3 minus y squared is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to the square root of 3 minus y squared. And then let's look at the z. A big tricky z. Um, we'll have 1 is less than or equal to z, which is less than or equal to the square root of 4 minus x squared minus y squared. Let that come through for you guys. Okay, cool. Okay, so now if we want to draw this picture, let's just start with um, the x and the y because I like x y graphs. Uh, if we do that, okay, so our y is going from negative square root of 3 to the square root of 3, and our x graph, if you look at it, um, it's just the equation of a circle, right? Um, if you squint <laughs> and cross your eyes, uh, but it's just the equation of a circle with a uh, uh, radius of the square root of three, which is nice because that's what our y bounds are. Now, if I draw my terrible circle, um, you can see that boom. So we have a circle um, with a radius of square root of three, which is nice because we're going to go into cylindrical coordinates, right? So that's pretty sweet. 
And now what we care about is our, um, our z term. So if we draw our z term, we have to convert this graph um, into three dimensions. So here's our x, here's our y, here's our z. Um, so what our graph looks like on the x, y plane right, is right here still. And now our z is um, greater than or equal to 1, so it exists up here. Um, but it's less than or equal to 4 minus y squared minus 2, which I think would probably look like that. Boom. Okay, so we've probably seen that before. All right, so um, let's try to put that into terms of integrals. So we'd have, um, we're going to change our dx, dy, dz, right? If we change it to cylindrical coordinates, that turns into, think about it, r, d, z, d, r, d, theta. Yes, awesome. I can hear all you guys saying along with me. So we'll have r, d, r, d, oh my goodness, see, I always do that. d, z, d, r, d, theta. Okay? So that's for the order of our bounds. Our x squared plus y squared just gets turned into r squared. Perfect. Okay. And now we need our bounds. So theta, easy, 0 to 2 pi. It's not always 0 to 2 pi, but we got pretty lucky today. Um, our r goes from 0 to the square root of 3. Because as we talked about, we're kind of looking at if this is our r, right? We've looked at that. Oh, you, there it is. It just updated. Um, that's our r in the bottom right corner. And then our z, we're going, this one's a little tricky, but we're going from 1, right? Because we don't change that z value. And now we need to convert this guy into um, uh, cylindrical coordinates. Square root of 4 minus r squared. Boom. Answer. All right, cool. So that's cylindrical coordinates. Usually in these problems, they ask you to do cylindrical and spherical. So let's do spherical now. Okay, I'll have the problem still pulled up here actually. For all right, I'll let you guys try running with it with like two minutes, and then hopefully we'll finish it up right as the session ends. Good luck. It's your turn to do some work. I've been doing a lot of work. All right, sweet. Let's talk about it with the final few minutes here. Okay, um, so let's start by converting our function into spherical. That might be the easiest. Uh, so we'll have x squared plus y squared. Um, converting that, that's just equal to r squared, right? r, remember, in cylindrical is equal to rho sine of phi. That's our r. Then we need to just square it, which becomes uh, rho squared sine squared. Cool. 
Um, so then I'd say, then let's move to the bounds. So then don't forget that we have our, we'll have our integral here. Um, and we'll have rho squared sine squared of phi. Our bounds are going to be rho squared sine of phi d rho d phi d theta. Just like rho, rho, rho your belt. All right. Cool. And now we need the bounds. Okay, a little tricky. Um, let's think about it. Theta, just like the last problem, nice and easy. 0 to 2 pi. Okay. Um, rho, I'd say let's do rho next. Um, so if we do rho, we've got, um, let's evaluate the lower bound first. So remember that 1 is less than or equal to z, which is less than or equal to the square root of 4 minus x squared minus y squared. So 1, remember, is equal to z. So z is still equal to, remember, go back to your identities that we talked about at the start of the session. Z is equal to, I know you're looking it up, rho cosine phi, yep. So z is equal to rho cosine phi. Um, so we can say that 1 is equal to rho cosine phi. And now we can get a function with phi to put at the lower bound. Um, so it'd be like 1 over cosine phi is equal to rho or rho is equal to the secant of phi. You might have seen that if you watched, oh, I just dropped my microphone. You might have seen that if you watched the lecture today. All right, cool. So um, let's talk about the upper bound now. The upper bound is the square root of four minus x squared, and we can do this actually. Let's do, that's one, two, two. So two, um, we've got, square root of 4 minus x squared minus y squared is equal to z. Um, so, remember we talked about how it's just a, a circle. Um, you can make it z squared plus x squared plus y squared is equal to 4. And that's really just rho squared is equal to 4. Rho is equal to 2. So now we have our upper bound and our lower bound, right? That green is our lower bound. Um, and the red is our upper bound. And now we can just write that really nicely. Um, 2 and secant of phi. Perfect. It's going to come through, I promise. All right, cool. Now we just need our phi, um, the tricky one. And it is 6 o'clock, so I'll do this really quickly. So we draw our graph. Um, if we graph it out, it looks kind of just like the last problem, right? like that. Um, so we already know that our radius, um, it travels all the way to uh, the square root of 3. And our rho, again, is equal to, at the very top, right there, um, oh, sorry, right there, 2. So rho is equal to 2. Um, and we could draw another triangle. Uh, so we'll have the cosine of theta is equal to um, we got adjacent, which is the square root of 3, over uh, opposite, which is 2, which means we get another pi over 3. So we get a pi over 3. We'll put that on the top bound. And because we're starting on that vertical axis, we'll have 0 for the lower bound. And boom, we just set up our in, uh, integral in terms of spherical coordinates. Awesome. Whew. Cylindrical and spherical coordinates, especially with integration, they're a little tricky. Um, but it just takes practice. It takes a little bit of doing, dusting off the cobwebs, and we'll get it done. But yeah, um, I'll be sure to post this PDF online um, if that helps. If you guys, I recorded this session too. If any of you guys watch the YouTube session, that helps. I can post it to YouTube. It takes a few minutes, but um, I've already got it, so it wouldn't be too hard. Um, but yeah, next session is Wednesday at 510. Um, we'll probably be talking about more about the cylindrical spherical coordinates and whatever else is in the Wednesday section collection. So, yeah, awesome. You guys have a, a great week. Get outside if you can. <laughs> Eat well, and I'll see you guys on Wednesday.